Hey, so today I want to show you how you can uh, spell check your code from the command line. Uh, but first to do that, I need to show you uh, spell checking in your editor and then uh, while this is useful. So I'm just in some random project here. Um, I'm looking in the main file and uh, going along here and my editor's telling me, hey, somebody misspelled cities. And I look at that and I go, okay, right, yeah, somebody did misspell cities. Um, and then I could, you know, get blame it or something like that. Figure out who, who actually committed this travesty. You've probably been in this situation a lot, right? So, you know, you go, you fix the spelling, right? So you'll rename it to cities like that. Uh, and great, work's done, you're really happy. But then you have to start thinking, like, how did that spelling mistake get in there in the first place? Because you wouldn't write that spelling mistake. Your editor would tell you, like, that's a spelling mistake. So somebody else who's working on this project doesn't have a spell checker on. And if they don't have a spell checker on, they probably made other errors. And what are you going to do? Are you going to look through all the files to try and find the errors that they've made? Probably not, right? So you need a spell checker. Luckily, there's a cool tool called cspell that lets you do exactly that. So uh, cspell, I think it stands for code spell. I don't know. It could stand for anything. The spell checker for code. And this is actually the... Uh, the extension. This is actually the the program that VS Code uses, that my uh, COC Vim uses, to uh, give me those little spelling warnings in in my term or in my uh, editor, right? But I want to do this now against my entire project. So first thing it tells you how to install it globally, uh, which is what I've done, and then it tells you how to use it. So uh, let's try exactly this. All right. So it's saying cspell on the source directory. I don't have a source directory, so I'll just start from here on all JS files, and this is a Python project, so I'll use py, and let's see what this tells me here. Okay, great. So I've got a number of unknown words. Typer, 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 cities, that's the one we actually saw, the real spelling mistake. Typer, typer, cities, amgi, and that's the, uh, that's the name of the project. So some of these are clearly not spelling mistakes. There's a few duplicates. Uh, I'm gonna clean up this output a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say I only want uh, unique um, spelling mistakes. Okay, so here are my unique spelling mistakes, typer, typer, cities, amgi. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want only to see the word because I don't actually need all of this output. Maybe you do, maybe you wanna see the file name, but for me, I only wanna see the actual word. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say uh, word, words only like that. Great, and so now I just have the words and the uh, the files checked. So now with a little thing like this, I can actually go through it and just say, okay, which one of these are actually spelling mistakes? Typer is not, typer is not, amgi is not, cities is a spelling mistake. Okay, great, so let me just go find that in my project. How many times do we have uh, cities misspelled like that? And I can see there's, there's two of them right here. There's also ways of passing like a, a dictionary or uh, a list of words to ignore. I haven't really got into that too much. Um, for my purposes, it's enough just to be able to scan some words really quickly and look for obvious spelling mistakes. Because if you run this on a, a real project, like a big project, there's gonna be a ton of uh, library names and stuff that are not spelling mistakes, but this thing thinks they're spelling mistakes. But for me, it's enough to see that like, oh, cities is clearly spelled wrong. I should mention that this thing actually handles uh, camel case, which is, which is the most important thing in code, right? So um, this is Python, you wouldn't normally use camel case, right? But let's say, I put in cities, okay, the spelling mistake is gone. And then uh, I change this to cool cities uh, like that. Still no spelling error, right? Uh, whereas a normal spell checker will say cool cities is not a is not a proper word. So that's why you actually want something like this as opposed to, you know, the spell checker in Microsoft Word or something like that. Let me tell you why spelling mistakes matter a lot in code. Uh, the first thing is that they uh, they end up propagating. They end up uh, duplicating and showing up all over the place. So this variable is called cities. If I want to use it below, okay, now I've got a spelling mistake twice, right? So it's the same variable, but the spelling mistake is, has continued on. Uh, this gets especially gross when all of a sudden you need to serialize data. So let's say I was serializing a JSON um, object, right, which had an array of cities. Uh, I might end up now having an issue where the key is cities spelled properly, right? And it references a variable where cities is spelled improperly. Or even worse, I end up sending out to the internet cities spelled improperly. And it gets all the way to maybe my UI 
uh, at the worst case. So catching spelling mistakes early is, is pretty important. So you may have noticed that uh, when a command exits with a non-zero exit code, so a non-zero exit code means that there's been some kind of error or failure, um, I get a little warning in my terminal. So let's look at this here. Uh, I get this little, it exited with code one, a little crying cat. So why is this thing exiting with code one? Didn't it do its job? Isn't it successful? Uh, the reason that it's exiting with a code one is that now I can throw this into a build pipeline if I really wanted to, and uh, it's gonna exit with an exit code that's not zero, and it's gonna fail that build. So you could actually set this up so that anytime a developer pushes code, if there's a spelling mistake in there, their entire the entire build will fail. So you never end up with spelling mistakes in, in production. I wonder if that would be worth the time to do, probably, but it would also create a lot of false positives. Um, so might might be useful. Anyway, I recommend you take a look at the project. There's a ton of features that I don't even know about, I haven't even got into, but uh, you may find them useful for your uh, use case. But uh, yeah, being able to spell check code from the command line is uh, pretty nice. Okay, hopefully that was useful. I, I looked for other videos like this and there didn't seem to be any. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help. Talk to you later, bye.